If I do this, is it gonna like screw up your, your sink later on? <laughs> so my first year in Los Angeles um, it was really, it was really inspiring for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, cool. So what's up? Uh, my name is Patrick Lawler. Uh, this is my uh, LA year one story. And I moved to San Francisco, went to the Academy of Art, got an amazing education there, but they fucked me. Um, all the teachers were great, but the school fucked me. <laughs> but the teachers were amazing. Like Ellen Sumter and Phil Bowen, they were some of the most amazing people I've ever met in my entire life. And they taught me so many important things that I brought with me. So. Uh, and also Adam Patch, he was a wonderful teacher. He brought me down to Los Angeles for the first time to work on a Set Your Goals music video. And I was like, wow, Los Angeles is so cool. It's so big. There's so much going on here. We went to the headquarters for Kino Flow. And I was like, well, you can just go to the headquarters for any company and just go look at everything they make. And you know, this kind of stuff was blowing my mind because I love gear and I'm just obsessed with stuff. You know, it's like any kind of equipment that can change something or, you know, change the way I light, change the way I create my images is really fun. So um, I wanted to be in Los Angeles because that's where the stuff is. Um, I was coming down here all the time. Uh, I was tired of sleeping on my friend's couches. There was one music video we were doing and I said yes to it because it was just a great deal. They had a red camera that they were going to rent for me. And at the time that was really, really rare. This was before I even owned one. This is before the Epic came out. This was right when the when the Red One was out. And so that you know, like we had the ability to rent a red camera and the concept was really good. And so they wanted to shoot out in the Salton Sea. And I said yes, but I lived in San Francisco. So I, I told them that I lived in Los Angeles and I was sleeping on a friend's couch. Um, and I had to drive out to the Salton Sea every morning to be there before sunrise to shoot and then when we wrapped at the end at sunset i had to drive all the way back to north hollywood from palm fucking springs and uh I, it was really really stressful not not living in los angeles and so i decided to move down i uh, started looking for houses with my friend cyrus and we found a warehouse uh in east la in glassell park and it was like the perfect thing ever it was uh it was about three thousand dollars for 3,000 square feet? No. It was cheaper than that. I think it was about... Anyway, we found this warehouse and each one of us was paying about $600 each to live there. And it was so dope because we just had so much space. And um, I remember I, when I first got there, I was checking out the whole place and I was, and there's this huge balcony, which was technically like a bedroom. And I was like, yo, dibs on that shit. Cause that's dope. And so like I went up there and it was like basically just this huge long balcony, the size of a house, you know, but like really skinny. And I was able to set up everything that I owned. I had like a really cool desk. I had all kinds of monitors. I had all my music equipment. I had all my film gear. I had room for everything. We had concrete floors, we could skateboard. I had a wall of guitar amps. Everyone in the, who lived in the warehouse, there were like four people, sometimes five people who lived there. Everyone is a musician or someone who worked in the film industry. One of the things that inspired me to move down to Los Angeles was the fact that I had kind of a job offer lined up. And I thought, this is the time to do it. Uh, I had just shot a commercial for the clothing company LRG and they, were super, super pumped on the video. And they said it was like one of the best commercials they had ever had shot for them. And they said, you know, like, dude, if you ever moved to LA, you got a job. And I was like, oh, wonder if they're serious. Maybe I should actually do that. So I moved down to LA and I hit them up and they were like, yeah, you should work for us. And they put me on a retainer and the retainer basically paid my rent. And then I was just their slave for two years. And so I would travel with them around the country and going all over the place to, you know, from Atlanta to New York to Florida. I can't even remember where we went. We went all sorts of places. And uh, we would shoot music videos and content, and, like day in the life pieces and stuff. And I would do motion graphics animations and I would travel with them and shoot lookbooks. And they were, they were pretty cool guys. Uh, I was really, really young at the time still. And I felt like I was the runt of like the whole group. They were all like a very tight knit group of guys and they were all like 30 or like at least 27. And I was like, you know, I was 23 or something, maybe 24. And they all kind of like, you know, like made fun of me a little bit. And it kind of like got to me and it like would hurt my feelings. 
and it would kind of make me feel like, oh man, I don't want to be someone's fucking bitch forever, you know, down here. Like, you have people who are seeing your work and they're like, oh man, it's so sick what you're doing. Like, everything you're doing is so rad. Like, I wish I could do stuff like that. And then, you know, you're, I'm always like, oh yeah, but you didn't see that, like, you know, like everyone was basically bullying me the entire time I was out there and they didn't pay me for two months. Uh, and, you know, shit like that. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I find that it just keeps, it, it's just like that, um, not not the bullying part, but I find that uh, people's perception of your reality is always vastly different. And, and that's why I try not to compare myself to people too often because, you know, I know everyone has their problems that they're going through. And every time I talk to my friends who I'm envious of their success, they're complaining about some kind of huge problem that's really stressing them out. That's really big. And it's just so funny. Everyone's, everyone is constantly pushing for the best, I think. And no matter where you are, you're never going to be satisfied. I'm never going to be satisfied with my work. I think that there's always something better I could have done. I think I could always be making doper shit. I'm just going to just obsessed with this shit and I could just keep making movies until I fucking die, you know? And they're never gonna be good enough, ever. <laughs> um, I remember one moment when I was sitting in my warehouse with my friend Cameron and we were both aspiring music video directors and we did a lot of stuff together and I would go off and do my own projects as well. And we were sitting around and we were just like shooting the shit and we were just like, man, I wish just one record label, any record label, any band would trust us with $2,000. Like that's, if, if, if a record label gave us $2,000, we could accomplish everything we want. And we were like, oh man, that'll be the day. And then, we, you know, I was like, you know, you know, man, it's gonna be funny someday when you're sitting around like, I can't do shit for $2,000. You know what I mean? But like, that, 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 what a what a incomprehensible situation to be in. I couldn't even fathom, you know, what what that Patrick in the future would be like. And now I am totally that Patrick. Like, don't ask me to come shoot your two thousand dollar project. I can't afford to do it. I can't pay anybody. I can't feed anyone. I can't rent. I mean, a location is three thousand dollars now. You know, just insurance alone is two thousand dollars just to make sure that my crew doesn't hurt themselves. Like, I can't do shit for two thousand dollars. It's so funny. It's so funny. Like, <laughs> um, I remember our first music video we got was for $3,000. That was like the, 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 the first video that I was ever like, oh man, we did it, we fucking did it. Um, and it didn't turn out super well, it turned out okay. Uh, and then we just kept, kept trying real, real hard. And eventually we got hit up by someone who said that they had ten thousand dollars for just camera department, and that they were going to handle all the other all the other things themselves? And I, like my mind was blown, and I was able to like actually live out my cinematography dream. I had enough money to actually afford a crew and pay them everything, and get catering, and rent a Condor, and rent a Dino Light, which is like a bigger maxi brute, and a twenty k, and we had a pond and a boat and like all kinds of choreographed dancers. And it was dope. And I remember uh, just walking around, paying everyone with cash and having a little bit left over and just going around and just like handing out the rest of the cash to everyone uh, who was working on the crew. And everyone was like blown away. And I was like, like, this isn't crazy. You guys just laid a mile of cable. You're all sweating. You've all physically hurt yourselves for me. Like, I don't understand who wouldn't operate like that. Who would keep that for themselves? It just didn't make sense to me. Uh, when I was holding all of it in my hands, I was like, I didn't earn any of this shit. These guys set this whole thing up for me and just made me look good, you know? So, uh, so I remember sitting there with Cameron and we were looking at each other and we were both kind of like, you know, this is what it's like once you've made it, you know, you, you can have all these big ideas and a whole bunch of people will go around and execute them and they treat you like your ideas are important. And it's really, really cool being trusted with that, especially when you deliver the video and the artist is fucking stoked. You know, like, like she came over and she saw it and she started screaming. She loved it so much. And I've never felt like happier delivering a project to a happier client where I like someone actually trusted me 
and gave me the budget that I requested. And like every time that's happened where someone's like, you know, what do you need to make this happen? I'm like this much. And they're like, okay. And then they let me do it. It's the best project ever. It's like whenever they like start working me down, like, oh, do we actually need six Apple boxes? Can we do four? You know, like once you start getting like nitpicky about anything like that, um, across the board, it starts getting, you know, when people start, start nitpicking and sitting over my shoulder and, you know, like second guessing me and stuff, the projects don't turn out as well. And so I've been trying to balance taking on projects that I know are going to do well versus paying the rent. And that's been the hardest part of living in Los Angeles is being able to afford rent every month because I still live month to month after a year eight. I think I've been here eight years. I'm not really sure. I don't keep track. But it's been a long ass time. Um, I've been living in the same house for six years now. It took me about two and a half years to get used to Los Angeles and figure out where I wanted to be and who I, you know, like wanted to hang out with and who my friend group was and what kind of projects I wanted to work on and what freeways I wanted to avoid. And, you know, it, it's LA is so massive. There's so many, it's, it's like 15 different cities that are all an hour apart. And I don't see any of my friends who live on the west side because I live on the east side. I barely ever cross the 101. Skylar's a very lucky person. I crossed the 101 for him today. <laughs> yeah, by about like 100 feet. <laughs> so now today, I am living in Echo Park and I run a production company with my two best friends, Scott and Derek. And our, deck, our production company, our production company is called Deca Creative. And we've been doing it for about three years. And these two guys have brought a lot of really cool stuff to my life, uh, mostly organization and business. And they're just so smart and they have such, they just have so much of their shit together. I'm just such a crazy, weird artist. And I'm going in so many different directions that these guys have really helped me get my shit together. And so now I'm really focusing on building my company and building a roster of other directors and talented artists who I like to work with. One of the coolest things about our company is that we spend so much time in pre-production because we really, really care. If we say yes to a project, we want, we care. We want it to be done the best as possible. And I've found a, a whole team of people who believe the same thing as me. And they believe in the betterment of everyone. They believe in the removal of egos uh, and they remove, or <laughs> and, and they believe in just working hard and doing whatever job needs to be done to get the project done and make everyone's you know, make everyone's lives great. So we want to make people's dreams come true and we want to make dope shit. So every shoot, we have every single shot planned down to the minute. I know exactly when people are going to show up. I know when equipment's going to show up. I know when I'm taking a break. I know what lenses I have to be on at what time during the day. This is all new to me, you know? And so now, now that we're so organized and we do so much pre-production, we've wrapped early on every single shoot we've done for the past three years. It's pretty dope. Pretty proud of that. <laughs> One of the coolest things about Los Angeles is every single person I've seen moved here has totally been able to succeed. But there's only two people I know who have moved away and that's because this life was just too fast for them. And that's it. Like everyone I know who's moved out here has gone from sleeping in a car and just being a PA to being a cinematographer. Or, you know, like gone from, gone from sleeping on friends' couches to being a actresses who are actually getting feature films made. Um, you know, like, like I've gone to meetings with people that I didn't believe in and now they're on major network shows. I've gone to meetings with people that I totally believed in and now they're signed by major record labels and stuff like that. It, this is a place that grows talent and nurtures talent and it's, and it's, the, it's a really wonderful place to be and it helps all of your crazy weird ideas come true. And so as a music video director, which is one of the main things that I do, uh, we come up with really stupid and crazy weird ideas. And you know, so like one of them uh, will be like, oh man, we need one of those machines that goes like beep, beep, beep from the hospital. It's like, where do we get that? Oh, let's, let's you know, like do some research and we find a place that has everything hospital related. And so then we can go down to this warehouse and it's some guys like, yo, I got, I got all these like beeper machines. You want one from 1960, you want from 1970, you want one from 1980, you want one from 1990. And you're like, Jesus Christ, like I just want a machine that goes beep, you know? But this guy's got a warehouse full of everything related to that. And it's so fun because 
anything that you want, there's someone who specializes in that. You know, like if you want a puppy, there's a guy who's like, yo, man, I have 50 puppies. Like you check out all the, I'll bring all of them. Like, you know, we can play with all the puppies, a mandatory 10 minute playing with all the puppies so the puppies can get used to everyone. And you're like, this is everything I wanted. Yes, let's play with some fucking puppies. Put them on the green screen, let's do it. You know, uh, and, then, and then there's like costumes. Costumes are just the funnest thing ever to get to work with, with talented wardrobe people. Um, going to Western Costume or any of these like other costume places is so crazy because they're, you know, like they just have a, they have a place that looks like the Indiana Jones ending, you know, where they're like going down that huge row of all of the boxes and stuff. It's just like that. It's the biggest warehouse you've ever seen times 10. And you're just looking down this endless, endless aisle and it's just hats from the 1920s, just going down to infinity. And you're like, whoa. And it's stacked all the way up and you need a ladder to go down and you're like, man, I really want like a taupe hat from 1943 that like a news guy would wear that has the little news thing in it. And the guy's like, oh yeah, third aisle, fucking fourth thing over. Any kind of art you want to get into, there's an expert. Um, anything you want to learn, someone's willing to, to share with you. The, the further we get from college and high school, the more supportive everyone is. Like the, I don't have any enemies. I don't have to fight with people for anything. I don't find that, like the only competition I have between people is for potentially the same music video bit. And at that point, it's like, just let the better idea win. Like if you come up with a better idea than me, fuck yeah, I'm proud for you. Like, that's great that you got that. Let me know if you need any help. You know, I'm down I'm down to give you a cheap lens roll. Like there's, there's absolutely no reason why anyone needs to feel like this is a cutthroat competition. And I, and I, and I see so many business people who are you know, out there like, you know, there's a cutthroat, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's not, this is fun, this is art, you know? Like, <laughs> have fun with your friends. There's no reason why this can't be fun. Every time I'm on set, running a set uh, with people that have never worked with us before, a lot of times they come up to me afterward and they're like, man, like, you guys were just like so fun. I didn't, like, this is crazy. And, and I'm usually blown away because I'm like, man, this is just how life should be. I don't understand how people can be yellers or really angry. Like when stuff isn't going right, you know, I'm just like, YOLO, let's fucking do it. You know, like we've, we've been on like big shoots where we have a $100,000 car that's being delivered to us from Germany or something. And like it, you know, like the thing opens up and the wrong car comes out, you know, and you have a shoot tomorrow that you're spending $80,000 on or something like that. Like, what do you do? You can yell about it or you can just say like fuck it let's just shoot it you know or whatever like you can figure you just like just say okay sweet dope problem let's figure it out you know um and i think that if you have this if you have this attitude la is so much fun um if 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 you don't let the, the other thing that you have to in order to survive la is you have to deal with a soul crushing volume of rejection so Along with the other directors at my company, we wrote 150 music video treatments last year and we won zero of those. It sucks. Each one of these treatments takes about five hours to do. So we sit there, we come up with all these thoughts, you know, we go on Pinterest and we find a bunch of images and we, you know, like we'll work all day doing graphic design for free and then we turn this in and then we hear nothing back ever. Nothing. We don't even hear if it sucks. We just hear nothing. And it's gotten to the point where like so many of our directors don't even want to write on music video treatments anymore. Um, and, it, and, it's, and it's really difficult running a company when there's so much rejection like this. Uh, and so, you know, it starts to hurt my feelings and I start to feel down. And I'm like, oh man, like, what the fuck? I gotta get out of this, this, like this is, this, you know, like am I cut out to be in this business? And I'm, you know, I'm 32 now. And I have, a, I own a red camera. I have a bunch of dope lenses. I'm everywhere I wanted to be when I was in college and more. I've been to more countries. I've met more people. I've worked with more incredible artists than I could ever even imagine. I've had the most fruitful, amazing and meaningful career. And I've met so many incredible people from all around the world. So um, I'm everywhere I wanted to be when I was in college. I am everyone that I looked up to when I was in college. I get contacted by people on YouTube all the time who are telling me that my demo reel was taught to them in their film class and it makes me want to cry. It's so dope. Like I, I'm getting a little emotional now just even think about it. Like the, they're, 
every day when I would come home from film school, I would just watch demo reels on Vimeo all day long. And I would freak out about anyone who even had a dolly or a rack focus. I mean, like being able to get a shallow depth of field was impossible when I was going to film school, unless you were shooting on film. You know, there were not digital sensors that were big enough. And then the lens adapter came out and stuff like that. And so I would just sit there and I would nerd out on these cinematographers who had access to real gear and it would inspire me so much. And to now find out and just like sit around and think about where I am now is so moving because if you go and search YouTube for cinematography demo reel, I'm number two. I have almost 200,000 views on my, on my demo reel which is incredible and they're all like so there's so many positive comments and there's so many people who have said like oh man this is like where i want to be sometime and it's like it's it's crazy like it's possible you that just hang out and try real fucking hard long enough and you'll have the most so many moments where you're like dude i fucking made it and you know and then and, but like there's there's still improving to be done but like i fucking i made it to that rung you know and Anyone can do it. Everyone can do it. There's no reason why you can't do it. There's no reason why you can't move to LA and make it out here. As I tell everybody, everyone who has moved out here, who has been afraid of moving out here has succeeded really fucking well. I'm so proud of all of my friends. I have such a strong community of people who have just been kicking so much fucking ass. And it's like, it's so dope. It's so, it's so much fun out here. I love it. It's the best. Great. That was perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.